So this is a camera that follows the player, but then if you fall off, it kind of teleports back to where it's going to uh, respawn. So let's say we have a character and he's on uh, a plane of grass. So we have this uh, area with some weird looking grass and you can run around it. Uh, but if you want like more of a uh, camera angle like this or something, um, there's a couple of ways to do it. One way is to use a camera pointer and make that the angle you want. So now we have that angle and the camera still follows, follows us around from that angle. Uh, but if you wanted to uh, have uh, other settings like um, you get in a camera, we can make a camera, simple camera rig. So we'll, uh, we'll turn off ServiceNet. Uh, so we'll make a box and this is just going to exist so that we can uh, move stuff around using it. And then um, we'll add a chip and just group those up. And then uh, we'll use a follower. So a follower gadget uh, takes a tag name. So if we add a tag into the puppet, then we can have the that block follow the puppet. So let's add that. Let's give it a name. Player. And we can move it around. So let's actually use L1 and triangle on the puppet to kind of align the grid to it. And then we can grab this and while holding it, press triangle to make sure it's on one of those dots. So it's kind of in the middle of the chest there. So while this uh, follow is selected or the tweak menu is open, then you can see uh, a gizmo if it's actually connected to something. So if you go into here and use affected, object, uh, affected objects and put that onto the uh, group, then the whole group will move towards the tag you set. So if we set it to player, using up and down to cycle through, then it will go towards that point. But we actually don't want it to go because what will happen is it will just bump into it and shove the player around. Um, so we'll just uh, give it some more strength, some damping, some speed. Um, you also see this gizmo here when it's selected or tweaked. And then you can move that around. And that dot is where what it's trying to get to the tag point. So if we put it over here, use triangle. Um, and then we can put it in exactly the same spot as where that tag is. And then we can put it in the same spot. Like that. So that's at that point. And the tag is at that point as well. So now that box will keep that distance and position relative to this object. So um, if we moved the puppet around, it'll move around to match. So now we just add a uh, camera over here. I don't need the grid on anymore. And we can scope into the camera with L1 and X. And then change exactly where it is and stuff so that the we have the right view we want. Um, now the cool thing with the camera is we can make the uh, field of view different. So if we look at it from the side, you can see uh, the angle of the of what you're seeing is smaller. So we see a smaller area of that, which also means that it seems less 3D. So if we scope in again, uh, we can use up and down to adjust that with the shortcut. And then we can move around and move back. And I'll have a more kind of uh, 2D view of it. So if we go play mode, whoa. Um, then we possess the, op the character and run around. So now we have a camera that follows the puppet. And you can see the shadow of the block. So you can just make that invisible. And that's how you do that. Now, um, now, a problem comes if you run away from where it would respawn at and then you die. The camera has to travel back to that position. So what we can do is we can do a similar setup 
but with a teleporter. A teleporter just moves an object to a position uh, instantly. So we can use the same tag. Um, and we want to, that also has a gizmo. So if we link that up to the group again, then that'll work. Or we can actually, instead of using these separate wires for each gadget in here, we can tweak the microchip and use apply to objects. So now all gadgets, oh, I need to turn on, turn off preview invisibility so we can see that invisible object and tag that to the group. And now all the gadgets in here will autom automatically apply to the group. So the so now we have that same problem where it's trying to get to that point. So we want to move the teleporter's gizmo to that point as well. Let's turn the grid on. And press triangle, snap it to the grid. And move it over like that. Like that. So the follower is at that point, and the teleporter is, and the tag is. So uh, now if we try it, so because we the teleporter is on, it's not doing the follow thing, it's just always matching that position, which might be what, what you want anyway, but let's say we want it to be a bit more subtle than that. So if we turn off the teleporter like that, then we get that nice easing towards the position. Um, but then we want to turn this on effectively when the player respawns. So if I turn on a timeline, use a timeline and just make it short. I can use L1 and right to expand it out time-wise. So now one, one second has all that area. Turn that off. And I'll use a keyframe to turn the teleporter on and just put it at the start. So now when this timeline plays, it'll teleport to the right position. So if I just move this to somewhere else, the timeline will play and teleport it to the right position. So if you put that into the player, into the puppet, then when it first uh, loads up into the scene or when it respawns, it'll run, uh, when it respawns, it actually makes a new puppet with all the same stuff in it. So then this timeline will play again. So now let's try that out. So run away a bit and then jump to our doom. And it teleports back perfectly. I'd like to thank the common people, Jason AC, Scully Volley, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.